Today, every day, small cap investors visit Agoracom knowing this is the day to discover the world's next great company, to have their dreams come true. That's why I take to the open road, to find them, to tell their stories, to engage them, to bring them to life. Because they want to connect with you from your office, your phone, your home, anywhere. Agoracom, find your dream. Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives right after important news. With us today, I'm happy to have Patrick Levasseur. He's President and Chief Operating Officer at HPQ Silicon Resources. The company trades on the Venture Exchange under the stock symbol HPQ for our friends in Frankfurt uh, under the stock symbol UGE. Now, most of you who know HPQ Silicon are used to watching me and Bernard talk about the solar grade silicon metal side of things and how that's going, which is going unbelievable. But a lot of you, sorry, and by the way, pardon everybody at home, my voice is going to be a little hoarse today. But what many don't know outside the shareholder base is that HPQ has got a fantastic gold project, the Bose, uh, and Bose Gold Fields. In fact, Bose Gold Fields is a wholly owned subsidiary, and HPQ is in the process of spinning that out into its own company. Uh, it's located in a unique, historically prolific uh, gold area in southern Quebec, and has hosted numerous historical gold mines that were active from the 1860s to the 1960s. Well, the other day, uh, the company put out in the news uh, just yesterday, HPQ Boast Goldfield Project granted 100% 100, 100 access to private properties on strong local support. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but here to tell us more, Patrick says it's a big deal. Patrick, welcome to the show. Thank you, George. Thanks for having me. All right. so. Why is social acceptability important? You don't see press releases like this come out very much, uh, that a company is, pro is granted 100% access to private properties. Why was this important in this situation? Well, because the last, uh, last few years, uh, you know, two main, two main things happened in Quebec. One has been, uh, there's, there's been a movement, maybe the last like, you know, six years or seven years, there's been a movement where, uh, you know, the perception of a lot of people, the population in Quebec that, you know, the mining company is the bad, you know, we're the bad guys, you know, you know the bad polluters and stuff like that. And also, uh, there was a big issue that happened, maybe some of you might have been familiar with, um, uh, the Osisco uh, project in Malartic, which is in the ABTB region. And that created a big fuss because, uh, well, you know, Osisco moved half a town. And, uh, you know, a lot of homes were moved and things like that. So, so it became an issue, and such an issue that when the Parti Québécois was in power, they submitted the new regulations where, um, where mining companies or exploration companies, uh, you needed what's called social acceptability. Uh, problem was that there's no defined rules what that means or what you need to get. You know, is it a paper? It's not there. It's actually it's sort of a consensus that you need. But there were some concrete uh, uh, provisions that were put in, a, in the law, in the re which became enacted just, uh, just like two years ago in the Quebec's new mining law, um, where you need, uh, you got to give the town permission, not the permission, you got to advise the local municipality, which we have, but more importantly, you, if, if your claim, or if the work you're going to do is on um, a private property, you need written consent from the property owner. And, and why would you be doing work on private property for everybody to own? You know, you've got boast you've got you've got what your project why do you need access to private property well we need access to private property because well you know a, a lot of mining projects a lot of exploration projects i mean if it was way up north in northern quebec well where you know your, your closest neighbors is maybe a moose or two it's not the case we're in a relatively uh, uh almost a not a rural it's a rural and uh, urban slash suburban area close to that in other words, there's not the, there's no crown land land in that area in the Bose. You know, it's been populated there for a long time. Cities grew out and stuff like that. So, uh, so over the last 150 years, what happens is that well, just about every apart the real estate owned by which we own a lot, we own 776 acres of real estate in the town of Saint Simon les Mines. The rest, it's all private property owners. And what happened was is that uh, it was just to uh, 
our lawyers explained that it's a question of, um, you know, they wanted to modernize a lot because uh, mining companies or exploration companies had their expropriation rights. Well, now basically they want the expression companies to have an understanding with the local property owners. Now, just, just to make everything clear is that we own mineral rights. We have the claims, right? Exploration claims and mineral rights. Uh, but some of these rights are underneath on people that own private land and if we're to be able to go on their land and do the work we want to do. You need written permission. Now, the, what was uh, the big thing about the boats just to do our work you know we had uh, we needed the uh, permission from 20 was 24 around 24 different property owners uh that we needed written permission to go on their land and do the work that we had to do and uh, so that's 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 24 one-on-one -on -one meetings that's convincing all these people that they have to not that they have to but you know to to um uh Convince them that it's going to be okay for them, and that in fact right. it's going to be beneficial to them at the end of the day. Yeah, because if we if if we don't if 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 we couldn't get that acceptability, if we couldn't have access to do our work, well, you know, we had the claims, we couldn't do the work. So that's what is, it, is absolutely important. What does it say about both the fact that you got one hundred percent access? So this sounds like it was unanimous. The town was all for it. It was. We had a town hall meeting with them. What, what was it that excited them the most that, uh, that the company's access uh, granted 100% access? Well, no, it, it was basically I, what I would have to attribute to, and that when we met the people and uh, when we had the town hall meeting, uh, you know, two things. You know, first of all, the, the people in the bowls are very, uh, I mean, they're special people. You know, there's, a, there, there's an entrepreneurial spirit in that area, uh, which is quite unique in the province of Quebec. And uh, secondly, um, you know, everybody, it, it's gold, you know, gold is part of their his heritage of the town. It's part of the town's heritage, even though there hasn't been a gold mine on operation since the sixties. And before that, almost a hundred years before that, uh, it's all part of the, uh, the, the folklore of the area. You know, everybody has a story of so-and-so, you know, picking up a nugget here and there, or, you know, uh, somebody that used to work, uh, you know, used to ride their bikes in the old works or, their grandfather worked on the old dredge. So they have a connection to that. And secondly, uh, like a lot of people, they're curious. They want to know, you know, is there, a good, is there a big gold deposit under my land? I'd like to know that. So that's how, so that's how we have them. So we think of them, of, uh, of course, as partners. You know, uh, they have, uh, they have an, a common interest, an economic interest in, in, in knowing that if there, is a, if there is a gold deposit somewhere, near or underneath their property and the only way to find out is to let us do uh, let us do the work well let's talk about what you do know right now you know what is it that you are so excited about on both we've because it's been a while since we visited this and you said something interesting they haven't had mining there since the 60s but there was mining there and there have been some big finds there oh so what is it that's happened historically you know just gives a quick summary there but more important what's, what, what's happened recently that has you guys really excited to, to get the access and to spin the company out. We're going to talk about that also, but what is about the project itself that has you excited? Well, the, uh, uh, the main thing about this project, all, all the gold operations that there was the last 150 years, you know, every 50 year cycles, there was always a big gold mining operation that happened in, in that area. And the town of St. Simone came in with the last one being in the 1960s. And all that was always focused on the placer deposit. What that means is that they were extracting gold nuggets in the called an auriferous till, which is basically, which is the last, which is the first layer of sediment sitting on top of bedrock, which is then buried by an overburden, a glacial overburden, which could be anywhere from 15 to 40 meters in depth. So, you know, in the uh, uh, beginning of the century, basically, you know, they were digging shafts and then they were digging tunnels just to get at that layer. And also whatever gold was in the cracks and crevices. And, um, the dredge in the 1960s was basically doing the same thing. Instead of, instead of digging shafts and tunnels, they went through heavy earthworks by trying to strip every, the overburden to get access to the gold. Um, so every time, and then every subsequent gold exploration project since then, their focus has always been trying to measure the placer gold deposit, the historical placer gold deposit, from which big, no, big no gold nuggets have been recorded up to 50 ounces at, at certain places. Yeah. Now here's the thing. Everybody has always been asking, well, where did all this gold come from? And nobody really ever looked. There has never been a big campaign, a big campaign with a scientific approach 
uh, you know, to try to sort out, you know, geologically the answer of how did those big nuggets form? Where did they come from? Now, from our work and, and, and evidence from his past work is that we believe that the source, the bedrock source of a gold deposit is somewhere nearby. You know, we, we believe that if there's one to be found, we have enough footprint of exploration property to find it. So we believe that it could be in the confines of the river valley of the Shibai River. And, um, and, and, and what really got us excited was the last work we did where we did some geophysics. Right. And we found a major fault line, which, you know, comes kilometers underground. It comes right up, right underneath the place or deposit, coincidentally. So uh, right now, we're, uh, the guys are still in the property. We're still continuing geophysics works. We're just doing many lines over that. We're doing geophysics on top of the old shafts and tunnels, which those 50-ounce nuggets came from. And uh, we're doing geophysics along some of, along some of the other roads to see uh, if we can detect, again, that fault line going at surface laterally. So there's all that. But social accessibility, I mean, without having permission of the property owners, the project uh, wouldn't happen. It's quite simple as that. You know, or, or it would have been long and arduous. And just to give you an idea of the feat that is, just to maybe just give you an importance of how for us we think, well, you know, um, some might remember years back, I mean, a lot of people might know is that a lot of the claims, a lot of the important claims that we hold in the boats, we, that was from a purchase that we did with Fan Camp Exploration. Those same properties, a lot of people don't know, but those same properties, FanCamp first sold them a couple years before we bought them to Bowmore Exploration, which was, the exploration was headed for by Bob Wares. Bob Wares, famously known as the founder of Cisco. Now, Bob Wares made a deal with FanCamp to purchase those claims with, uh, and part of the deal is that they were to spend uh, $8 million in exploration and, um, and a lot of fanfare. And then suddenly, uh, Bowmore backs out. And after Bowmore backed out, that's when we came in and that's when we made a deal and FanCamp sold us to those claims, those properties. Anyways, I was always curious as why did Bowmore really back out? So uh, uh, I spoke with, uh, with Bob Wares and uh, I asked Bob Wares, says, why did you guys back out? Is, it, is there something you discovered there that you don't like about the property? Uh, you know, is it, is it, is there, you don't believe the source is somewhere there? And he tells me, he says, no, I believe there's a source. I believe there's a gold deposit there. You know, no, I believe that. But that's not the reason why we backed out. I go, why? Why'd you back out? Because we needed everybody's permission. We had to get, you know, we're getting, you know, it says, oh. Ah, the there the is the importance of the social acceptance. Okay. Yeah, you know, and getting everybody's permission to do exploration. So you left us on a cliffhanger there until yeah. the end. Okay, now this ties in. So yeah. you're talking about there could have been major work done that was stopped a long time ago. And now you've got it. You've got we the green it. light. So, you know, for, for, for him, this was such a big hurdle, and, uh, and, and it is, you know, I mean, that's, uh, you know, we, we have to do a lot of talking, and, and uh, some people, you know, uh, it, you know, it took quite a few discussions to get them on board, but it, it was a question of doing the, you know, being present, uh, you know, where people see us working, and, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we, as much as possible, we have people, people from the town that work for us and doing, helping us do our exploration, the economics benefit starting from exploration, that's important for us. You know, we always have to find a way to give back to the town, which we do. Uh, you know, when there's resources to use, you know, supplies, it's, you know, closest to the town as possible always. That's our mandate. And, and again, just being present. So, so those one-on-one -on -one meetings were crucial. Getting the people to sign on was crucial. And, and, uh, and we did it. We did it. And, um, now, and, and, and for someone at home watching this, the great thing is, you know that the previous the Balmore wanted to do this. They just couldn't get the acceptability. So that's a really big green light to have. What's next on the project? If you can give us a summary, because I don't want to go to the spin out, but what's next in terms of work on the project? Are you going to wait till you do the spin out, then raise funding and go forward? Or what does the next six months look like? Well, for sure, the, uh, 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 uh Continuing big exploration plans will happen under um, when when Bull School Fields is up and running as its own um, publicly listed company. Um, so uh, when when that happens, you know the idea is to promote properly promote uh, the Bulls the Bulls School project in, in Quebec locally as well, especially local. You know, um, try to get the people involved. You know, it's uh, uh, 
And the closer the people are to a project, the more they, they, feel, um, they feel close to it and the more they want to be uh, active partners or stakeholders in the, in the project. So that'll be first level of promotion. And then, um, you know, I think we'll, we'll get, you know, there was some people's concerns. Maybe I could talk about a bit of um, the town meeting, how it went. <coughs> um, the town meeting went much better than I thought. And we had, we had 70 people that showed up. And that's not bad for a town the size of the town of 500 people. So we had 70. That's almost like every household present sure. uh, at the town sure. meeting. And um, it went well. At first, you know, they, they, uh, they listened to my presentation and then the questions came. And then they had, they had very legitimate concerns. You know, one of them being says, well, would this be another Malatze? Uh, you know, is our town going to be swallowed up by a giant pit? And, um, you know, the response to that is that it's, it's highly unlikely because just simply the geology, the way the geology is in the area, that if, if there is a gold deposit found and from the evidence of geology we see now it'll both it, it it will most likely be instead of having a low grade massive deposit it should be very fairly con, fairly con, geologic should be fairly consigned you know like 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 a fault structure or something like that which usually is is more traditional mining you see in a btb or timmins and giant pits like you see from the malatic operation so unlikely it wouldn't be that that was one of the main concerns Main concerns is that, well, what type of work do we do? What type of damage on the property can be done? So, uh, you know, we made understand that if this isn't a one-on-one -on -one negotiations, uh, you know, we, we go through them, what work has to be done, uh, you know, if there's any tree cutting has to be done, if there's anything that has to be displaced, you know, the, the important thing, things to be put back the way it was and things have to be done to your liking. That's very important. That was main yeah, concern. The, the, which is standard concern yeah. to see yeah. a lot of the areas, right? Concern. But, but it went really well. I mean, you know, this meeting lasted for hours. And in the end, of course, people's main question was, uh, great, how can we invest in, uh, in HPQ and both Goldfield? What's next? Now, that's a great, that's a great yeah. turn. So not only did you walk in there not seeing, not know if you're going to get social acceptability, but you got that. So you got social acceptance. You got the concerns out of the way to the point now that the town is asking how we can invest. That's a good sign, Patrick. Yes. You, must have a great, you must have done a great job, that's for sure. So hats off to you. Question, last question, because you do bring that up about investing. What is going on with the spin-out? What can you tell us today uh, about the nature of the spin-out? Well, I, I know it's, I, I won't make a public announcement with this, uh, with this um, uh, interview right here, but sure. um, you know, just to let, let it, I just want to reassure everybody that you know, the, this project has not been shelved, nothing like that. It, you know, we've been, the, the last couple of months, we've been going full speed ahead to really get it done. And, um, you know, once we can make a major announcement, people will have an idea of, of just the colossal task it was for us just to get all the pieces lined up. And everything was important. For example, just this, as simple as it seems, you know, you know if there's no social acceptability, well, then the value of the transaction is not, uh, because it's really, it's a transaction between two companies, HPQ and Bose Goldfield, for it to be listing, uh, the value of the, uh, of the asset wouldn't be there or wouldn't be as high if we didn't have social accessibility. So that was really important. That was one thing we had to get that out of the way. And, and of course, a lot of other little details, which you know, we'll talk about more in, uh, when we're gonna give an official update on the, on the post -mail. But that being said, you know, I, I ask people just patience. You know, patience, the gold's not going away, it's still there, you know, and the spinoff will happen. And you know, we are digitally working on it, we're working hard on it. And, uh, and in the meantime, gold is moving in your favor anyway. So while you've been sitting, you know, while you've been sitting, get, pushing this through, gold's yeah. only been on the move. You happy with the direction of gold, obviously, but do you see it going higher? I, 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 my, my personal opinion, yeah, yeah. You know, we've been seeing basically, you know, the the, the broad markets, you know, the Dow and the S and P. Uh, uh, I'm putting on my my broker hat, my opinion here, but. Uh, but you know, we've seen so many indexes, for example, the, the, G, the GDX, the gold index, the, the gold company index has broken out to the upside, which hasn't happened in a long time. And of course, you know, we're starting to see a, you know, a bit, of, bit of a parabolic rise on the S&P and the Dow. So, uh, so you know, if everything crosses over, then it looks like then, then yeah, it seems um, we're heading in the right direction as far as gold and, um, and being the gold, gold sector. Yeah. But, well, Patrick, thanks for joining us today. Um, you know, it seemed like a small matter, but you've explained to us why it was important and why it's important from a business development point of view. Uh, that story about Balmoral, that's, that's great uh, anecdotal information. And I expect to have you on sometime in your future, hopefully when you have some kind of official update about the actual spin-out. 
which is uh, what everyone is waiting for. But this is a this is a great uh, development today, and thanks for being here. It's been a pleasure, George. You've been watching Patrick Levasseur. He's president and chief operating officer at HPQ Silicon. The company trades on the stock symbol HPQ, and for our friends in Germany under UGE. Get to Agoracom, bunch of the company's name or stock symbol. Do more research on HPQ. Get all the questions that you need. Put them on Agoracom because both Patrick and Bernard are there to answer them for you because they've got a CEO verified discussion forum. No spam, no nonsense, no profanity, just the real stuff. Get to Agoracom and to start talking about it to Patrick because if you have more questions about what you heard today, that's the place to get your answers. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.